good morning students today i'm going to explain the mouth parts mouth parts of cockroach just we recall what we have completed in the periplaneta americana so periplaneta americana introduction is completed and also periplaneta americana scientific name of cockroach the body is divisible into three regions called tagmata three regions are called tagmata called head thorax and abdomen so head head of cockroach head of cockroach just uh, we finished yesterday head of cockroach that consists clearites it consists uh, sensory organs sensory appendages so we discussed about the total structure of head in that head only mouth parts are present which are useful for the cutting of food materials just like our teeth so in our mouth teeth are present teeth are useful for cutting of food material grinding of food materials in seizing and grinding of food materials so for the grinding of food materials we have teeth same like that mouth parts are present in the cockroach so mouth parts of cockroach are the biting and chewing type of mouth parts biting biting and chewing type biting and chewing type of mouth parts which are most primitive type which are most primitive type starting type of mouth parts actually this type of mouth parts are present in the larvas of the insects in the larvas of the insects only this type of mouth parts are present but in the cockroach adult also this type of mouth parts are present the most primitive starting type the starting type of mouth parts are the biting and chewing type of mouth parts which are seen in the periplaneta americana cockroach so what are the what are the appendages what are the appendages present in the biting and chewing type of mouth parts appendages are the first part first part is the labrum 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 is also called as upper lip labrum is also called as upper lip so this one is the upper lip we discussed yesterday in the structure of head so one triangular plate one triangular plate that hangs to the clypeus so top to bottom we discussed about the that uh, top to bottom parts of the head so in that clypeus rectangular plate is called clypeus to the clypeus one triangular plate is attaches which is called labrum so labrum is a triangular plate it is a triangular plate which is presented uh, upper side just attaches with the clypeus labrum labrum is also called as a upper lip so labrum it is a triangular plate it consists some sensilla which are called gustatory sensilla okay na it is some sensilla which are called gustatory sensilla gustatory sensilla are useful for the sense of sense of sense of taste okay na these are useful for the sense of taste that means what is the function of labrum labrum it is gustatory sensilla which are useful for the tasting of food materials okay we taste food materials with the help of papillae present on the tongue tongue is the organ which is useful for the tasting of food in the human beings in the cockroach in the cockroach so labrum only that consists of sensory papillae like gustatory sensilla gustatory sensilla are useful for the tasting of food materials which is located which are located on the labrum also called as upper lip it is also called as upper lip and also it hold the food materials holds the food materials while cutting holds the food materials while cutting so during the cutting of food materials during the cutting of food materials labrum that hold the food okay and it hold the food during the cutting of food materials that is the function of labrum labrum is a triangular plate which is mobile attaches with the clypeus inner side of the labrum that consists some sensilla which are called gustatory sensilla gustatory sensilla are helping in the tasting of food materials and labrum 
it also hold the food materials while mastication of food materials while cutting of food materials so first part it is a first part present in the mouth parts of a cockroach okay na? next uh, second part second part second uh, mandibles one pair of mandibles okay na? here these are the mandibles we discussed yesterday about the mandibles mandibles are teeth just like teeth they acts like teeth which are useful for the cutting of food grinding of food materials okay now where these are present uh, these are attached to the fourth segment of the head in the head first segment and third segment without any appendages second segment that consists one pair of antennae then fourth segment that consists one pair of mandibles which are attached to the zena which are attached to the zena also called as cheek sclerites okay then inner sides of the mandibles that consist teeth inner sides of the mandibles that consist teeth these teeth are useful for the grinding of food okay na? these teeth are useful for the grinding of food so they are moving in opposite direction teeth or mandibles are moving in opposite direction when they are moving opposite direction if any food particles are enters here in the middle of these two mandibles so the food particles are grinding into fine particles the food is grinding into fine particles so cutting of food grinding of food is a function of a mandibles so grinding of food is a function of mandibles then movement of the mandibles how they move okay now they move with the help of two types of muscles which are called adductor muscles adductor and abductor adductor and abductor muscles these two types of muscles helping in the movement of the mandibles okay now what is the function of mandible one pair of mandibles are present on both the sides of the head zena in the fourth segment so they move in opposite direction while they are moving in opposite direction if any food particles that comes in the center in the middle of these two mandibles so they ground into fine particles okay now that is a function of our uh, teeth uh, which are present in the mandibles they move in opposite direction by the movement of the by the movement of these two types of uh, muscles like adductor and abductor muscles they are helping in the they are helping in the movement of the mandibles they are helping in the movement of mandibles so, so second part second part second type of appendage second appendage is present in the mouth parts of a cockroach then third appendage is third appendage is which are present in the mouth parts of cockroach third appendage is are the first maxillary first maxillary where the first maxillary are present uh, so these are the first maxillary first maxillary are attached to the fifth segment of the head these are attached to the fifth segment of the head mandibles are attached to the fourth segment of the head first maxillary are attached to the fifth segment of the head first maxillary so these are present both the sides both the sides of the head they are also helping in the carrying of food okay now holding the food while mastication of food upper side the food materials are hold with the help of labrum then lateral sides food materials are hold with the help of this maxillary first maxillary these are called first maxillary again first maxillary that consists three parts okay now first part of the first maxillary is called protopodite protopodite second part second part is the exopodite exopodite third part is the endopodite protopodite exopodite endopodite okay now first one is the protopodite so what are the parts present in the protopodite here two segments are present which are called first segment is called cardo second segment is called stipes cardo is attached to the head 
okay now so these are present like this so cardo is attached to the head cardo is attached to the head so head is present like this cardo stipes cardo stipes then maxillary pulp present like this okay now so cardo is the first segment present in the protobodite first one is the cardo second one is stipes cardo stipes these are the two segments present in the protobodite next exopodite 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 that consists of two parts one sclerite is present on the stipes one sclerite is present on the stipes which is called palpi fur exopodite that consists palpi fur palpi fur palpi fur is a sclerite what is sclerite sclerite is a plate just it is a small plate which is holding on the stipes outer side of the stipes that is one small uh, one small plate is present which is called palpi fur on the palpi fur five segmented pulp is present which is called maxillary pulp okay now on the palpi fur five segmented pulp is present which is called maxillary pulp maxillary pulp okay now how many segments are present uh, five segments five segments are present uh, present in the maxillary pulp okay now what is exopodite exopodite that consists palpi fur and maxillary pulp palpi fur is a sclerite on the palpi fur so this one is a palpi fur on the palpi fur five segmented maxillary pulp is arises okay now so what is the function of maxillary pulp maxillary pulp it helps in the cleaning it helps in the cleaning of cleaning of antennae what are antennae antennae are the sensory organs present in the second segment of the head so it is useful for the maxillary pulp is useful for the cleaning of antennae and cleaning of front pair of legs front pair of legs first pair of legs okay the cleaning of antennae so with the help of this maxillary pulp it clean the antennae it clean the antennae and also it clean the first pair of legs front pair of legs that is the function of maxillary pulp okay the pulp for maxillary pulp these two are the parts present in the exopodite next third part is the endopodite endopodite so endopodite endopodite it consists two parts okay the endopodite each maxillary that consists two parts in the endopodite a hood like galea and a pincer like lesenia galea and lesenia okay na? what are the two parts present in the endopodite a hood like a hood like galea and a pincer like a pincer like lesenia okay na? galea and lesenia galea and lesenia are the two parts present in the endopodite clear three parts are present in the maxillary pulp okay the first maxillary that consists three parts what are they cardo stipes which are collectively called as which are collectively called as protopodite then uh, palpi fur and five segmented maxillary pulp called uh, exopodite galea lesenia collectively called as uh, collectively called as endopodite three parts are present protopodite exopodite endopodite protopodite that consists how many parts two cardo and stipes that means how many cardo are present in the mouth parts of cockroach here one cardo and this side also one cardo two maxillary two maxillae each maxillae that consists one cardo means paired okay now paired means two cardo are present how many stipes are present there two stipes number of stipes are also two paired okay na? then palpi fur paired or unpaired paired okay na? identifying of uh, that parts which are present in the mouth parts paired or unpaired first maxillae paired or unpaired so first maxillae are paired because two first maxillae are present what about mandibles mandibles are paired or unpaired paired one pair what about the labrum paired or unpaired labrum is unpaired only one labrum is present 
upper lip is only one that's why unpaired unpaired single paired mandibles are paired then first maxillae paired then cardo paired styles also paired like this so five jointed maxillary pulp pulp p for and five jointed maxillary pulp are present which are called exopodite endopodite endopodite that consists hood like galea and a pincer like lesenia okay now so these are the parts present in the first maxillae what is the function of first maxillae first maxillae is useful for the cleaning of antennae and also front pair of legs and also it holds the food materials holds the food materials and prevent the falling of food materials it prevent the falling of uh, food materials that is the function of first maxillae where this first maxillae are attaches uh, attaches sides of the head in the fifth segment of the head fourth segment of the head that consists mandibles fifth segment of the head that consists uh, first pair of uh, maxillae again first maxillae that consists three parts called exopodite endopodite protopodite protopodite that consists two parts called cardo and stipes exopodite that consists two parts called pulpy for and maxillary pulp then endopodite that consists a hood like galea and a pincer like lesenia okay now. then next part next part in the mouth parts right next part in the mouth parts second maxillae second maxillae second maxillae so one pair of second maxillae which are present in the sixth segment these are present in the sixth segment one pair of second maxillae are present in the sixth segment both are fused okay both are fused to form one structure which is called labium labium or lower lip it is also called as lower lip upper lip labrum lower lip labium this total part is called lower lip or labium which is formed by the fusion of two second maxillae first pair of maxillae they are separate but two second maxillae are fused okay right? two second maxillae are fused to form only one structure which is called labium this part is called labium again labium or lower lip that consists three parts which are called prementum prementum then second part is the mentum and third part is the submentum prementum mentum and submentum okay now so this one is the prementum then mentum and submentum three parts are present in the labia then lateral sides of the mentum lateral sides of the mentum it consists lateral sides of the mentum it consists it is palpizer 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 is a sclerite palpizer is a sclerite so one pair of palpizer are present which are present lateral sides of the mentum so one pair of palpizer here palpifer palpifer is a sclerite on the palpifer five segmented maxillary pulp is arises then on the pulp is there on the pulp is there three segmented how many segments are present 1 2 3 here how many segments 1 2 3 4 5 5 segmented labial pulp is arising from the pulp is there then three segmented three segmented maxillary so here here maxillary pulp here five segmented maxillary pulp is arising but here three segmented labial pulp is arising from the pulpy zer okay na three segmented labial pulp labial pulp the pulp which is present on the labium is called labial pulp the pulp which is present in the maxilla is called maxillary pulp okay na so in the maxillary pulp maxillary pulp is arising on the pulpy for labial pulp is arising on the pulpy zer two sclerites clear difference between the palpi for and palpi zer palpi for five segmented maxillary pulp is arises palpi zer three segmented labial pulp is arises then at the end of the at the end of the prementum at the end of the prementum it has two parts 
which are called glossa and paraglossa glossa and paraglossa okay na this part this part is called glossa this part is called paraglossa which are formed by the fusion of kale and lecini of second maxillary okay na glossa 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 is formed by the fusion of lecinia similar to lecinia paraglossa it is similar to galea okay galea and lecinia are the parts of first maxillary galea and lecinia same parts are present in the second maxillary also which are called glossa and paraglossa so glossa is similar to lecinia of first maxillary paraglossa is similar to galea of first maxillary here glossa and paraglossa both are collectively called as ligula both are collectively called as ligula glossa and paraglossa both are collectively called as ligula so this is a second maxillary second maxillary present in the sixth segment of the head so both the sides of second maxillary are fused to form one structure which is called which is called labium or lower lip each labium it is unpaired unpaired means only one labium is present but actually two second maxillary are fused to form one labium labium is un unpaired it has three parts called prementum mentum submentum okay na at the end of the prementum it consists glossa and paraglossa which are similar to the galea and lecinia of first maxillary then uh, lateral sides of the mentum that consists palpizer palpizer on the palpizer three segmented labial pulp is arises then uh, submentum so these are the three parts present in the labium which are useful for the holding of food these uh, glossa paraglossa labial pulps all these parts that prevent the falling of food materials while mastication of food while cutting of food so these teeth are useful for cutting of food while cutting of food this prevent the falling down of uh, the food particles that is the function of uh, labium or lower lip okay lower side it is present labium or lower lip and one more part is present one more part is present which is called hypopharynx it is called hypopharynx okay na? so this one is the hypopharynx hypopharynx is also called as lingua or tongue lingua or tongue hypopharynx it is a rod like structure rod like structure grooved it has one groove and it is unpaired only one is present which is useful for the releasing of saliva again okay, releasing of saliva into the mouth it is useful for the releasing of saliva into the mouth okay and these are the five parts present in the mouth parts of cockroach in the mouth parts of cockroach first part is the labrum what is the function of labrum it hold the food materials while mastication of food and also it taste the food materials mandibles one pair of mandibles are present in the fourth segment which are useful for the grinding of food materials so they are moving with the help of two types of muscles called adductor and abductor muscles inner side it has teeth useful for the grinding of food then first maxillary first maxillary are attached to the fifth segment of the head each first maxillary that consists of three parts what are they protopodite exopodite endopodite protopodite that has two segments which are called cardo and stipes then exopodite that consists of palpifer and five segmented maxillary pulp then endopodite galea lecinia hood like galea and a pincer like lecinia so function of maxillary pulp it clean the antennae and also it clean the front pair of legs of cockroach then uh, galea lecinia galea lecinia they hold the food materials while cutting of food materials next uh, second maxillary both the sides of second maxillary which are present in the sixth segment are fused to form labium or lower lip which has again three parts called prementum mentum submentum then at the end of the prementum that consists of glossa and paraglossa which are similar to galea and lecinia 
and both are collectively called as ligula then lateral sides of the mentum it has one uh, pulp is there scleroid on the pulp is there three segmented labial pulp is arises three segmented labial pulp is arises okay na? it hold the food materials while mastication of food then one more that is hypopharynx hypopharynx is also called as tongue or lingua so it has one growth through this groove only saliva is releasing into mouth okay na? saliva is releasing into mouth through this groove lingua or tongue it is also called as hypopharynx okay na? mouth parts of cockroach i hope you understand mouth parts of cockroach just uh, what are the parts present in the mouth parts of cockroach that you have to identify all these parts so parts name somewhat difficult but uh, you have to practice that parts names of uh, mouth parts of cockroach okay na? so total head topic is completed head is completed next part uh, next part thorax and then abdomen okay now first tagmata is the head first tagmata is completed second tagmata thorax third tagmata abdomen i'll discuss about that uh, thorax and abdomen in the next classes okay now thank you